All right, I'm gonna go ahead and put the lifters in here. These are the new used lifters or lower mileage lifters that were used uh, that I got from Penwall Cycle on eBay. I've dealt with them before. Good company. The lifters look brand new when I got them, as did the lifter pens. Uh, these lifter anti-rotation pens are obsolete now. I guess that's what when I looked them up, they didn't give a price and said they were not available. And when I called the dealer, they said they couldn't get them anymore. So what they were selling these for used, uh, it would have cost me roughly $15. That's including shipping for one pen. I got four lifters and four rotation pens for what it would have cost me to get one one rotation pen. Uh, low mileage stuff, it all looked brand new. You know, I opened it and inspected the rollers as soon as I got it, then the lifter bodies, they all looked, they looked, looked brand new. I mean, slight, you, know, you could see slight wear on the roller from where they had been ran, but not, not a whole lot. So this isn't this isn't going to be a high mileage road bike, so we don't really care about that. And I sure as hell wasn't buying the cheapo uh, lifters. I found some lifters online that were, you know, forty something dollars for four brand new lifters. You know that's coming out of China, and they have a tendency to not be very good. All that being said, uh, <clears throat> if you needed some better lifters than stock even, CompCam makes a complete set of lifters for like 123 bucks. And then they char do, do charge you a little bit of shipping, but you look up the same lifters from another supplier, they're 150, 160 bucks, and on up the who knows what, you know. I've used comp cam stuff a lot in the past, and it's good quality stuff. There's only like one place in the United States that make, makes lifters, and they make them for everybody. That's Delphi. So, you know, when you see your S and S lifters or whoever else's lifters that are supposedly high performance, just realize that they're made by Delphi. Unless they're knockoff clones from China, and then their, their metallurgy is not very good. And you can tell as soon as you get a Chinese lifter just by looking at it that if you take a magnifying glass and look at the tooling marks on the lifters, that it's not a good quality product. Anyway, I've had these lifters. I cleaned them first. Just sprayed them off with some parts cleaner. And then had them soaking yesterday and oil overnight cleaned any oil off the lifter pens so let's make a mess here Nice, nice, clean, clean, clean oil on there. Let's get the oil on. Now, when you put these lifters in, it's got a flat part up the top of the lifter here. That the road, the, these, the flat parts kind of have to face, kind of have to line up this way so you can fit the anti-rotation pins in there. So the Rollers are sitting squared in cams there, and you know you can you can turn them slightly if you get them in there crooked. They'll turn fairly easily, or they should.
All right, my old lifters did have about 70,000 miles or all, close to 70,000 miles on them anyway. As far as I know, the bike's got 70,000 miles on it, so I'm guessing that the lifters probably had never been replaced. I don't think anyway, so. And they were getting a little ticky, so. Doing ourselves a favor by replacing them. Okay, you want to stick your fork when you Loctite in there. I'm going to stick a pin in there to make sure that it actually does, in fact, slide in with the lifters are in there correctly as far as the flats go. Yeah. They did upgrade these lifters from the 99 earlier ones on 2000 and up. These these used ones I got came out of a 2002 or 2003. So your lifter, when it's sitting in there, this little flat right here, where it goes up against the lifter, keeps the, keeps the lifter from rotating because if if these pens weren't in there, these lifters would just spin around and then you rollers wouldn't be in line with the cam there. So they go they go just like just like that facing down. Lifters should be right there, just just like that. If you can see that. So that one fits, and that one fits. We're going to take some, we're going to coat these threaded portions with Loctite on the pens themselves. And then we'll have to torque those. That Loctite's going to do two things on these. It's going to keep them in position, and it's going to seal up the threaded area here. You just, just use a 530 seconds Allen socket. All right, if you got one that's not lining up, like I just had one here that one, one lining up, you can take a magnet, stick it directly on top of the lifter, and spin it wherever it needs to be. And book says these are 55 to 65 inch pounds. Uh, and since somebody absconded with my inch pound torque wrench, I'm using my foot pound torque wrench again. So we're setting them at five foot pounds. Isn't a whole lot, but that's what they call for. Again, these are only five thirty second Allen socket that you're going to use to tighten these with.
Now remember, I used a fairly good amount of blue Loctite on this. So that's it. That's it for the leopard. And uh, good and oiled, filled, let them sit overnight so they'd soak up any oil. Now, when you get new lifters from whoever, they're going to look like they have oil on them. That, it, it ain't oil that's on there. It's just an anti-rust protectant. It has absolutely no, no lubricating properties whatsoever. So you're going to want to clean that rust preventative, whatever it is, off there and soak them in oil. That's whoever, parley, aftermarket, whatever. You need to soak the lifters in oil unless you're converting them over to uh, hydrosolids in which you're going to disassemble the lifter body and put a little washer that goes in there and convert them over to a hydrosolid. Which, if you have adjustable push rods, that's probably the route to go. They do work. Harley used to sell a long time ago. They did it as a Screaming Eagle. Uh, actually, it was a solid lifter conversion thing. No, I don't think, I don't know if Screaming Eagle still sells them or not. They did a long time ago. And s, &S still makes some travel limiters. That actually is all, all the hydro solid is. It's got that travel limiter there. It just limits the travel of the piston. It's kind of, kind of, sort of almost mimics the solid. It just takes up an extra room under the piston that's inside the lifter. Uh, they work good. It's a good setup if you're, you're putting the uh, collapsible push rod tubes and adjustable push rods. Uh, that's something you need to plan for. I'm not a big fan of quick install push rods just because the adjusts are so small on them. So you get a lot of deflection out of those down at the bottoms because uh, to make them quick install, they have to really cut down the size of the adjuster. So normally it'd be like a 5 16 adjuster and a hydro solid or the quick install push rods are only like a quarter inch. Now, if you got spring pressure or even just high RPM on these things, uh, you'll get a lot of deflection out of a quarter inch adjuster. Doesn't matter how hard it is, you'll just get a lot of you'll get a lot of uh, deflection out of it. But before I make this too long, that's it for putting them lifters in there. And, uh, Get ready to go fit the rings on this thing here in a couple of minutes after I get done with this. I go get another cup of coffee. Wipe any excess oil off of here. And since I just painted these, I'm not spraying anything to clean them off. It's going to be harmful to the paint, so we'll uh, leave that at that. And wash it off with hot soapy water. Once the bike's all back together again, we'll need to get it off there before we actually run it because you don't want any oil stains on, on hot metal, which it will stain the paint if you start it up like that. So that's it for the lifters. Thanks, thanks to the new subscribers. Thanks, old subscribers. Uh, if you like my content, please like, share, subscribe, comment, all that stuff. And it's Friday, so everybody have a great week. I don't think we'll make it. We might. I don't know. Depends on how fast they're having. Uh, trying to get the boy into a test and tune sometime here within probably June. They're having a... Uh, some kind of Harley Street shootout at 710 Dragway in Fayetteville in, on June 14th, which is a Friday. So we may or may not make that. And if we don't, we just do some testing tunes here local at Gallup. Gallup's probably 20 minutes away from here. Uh, 710 Dragway is just a straight shot down 95 and then hang a left and it's 
probably about 40 minutes, 45 minutes, something like that, just down the road. I thought it was a quarter mile, but it's only an eighth mile track too, so we're kind of limited here. There's, I don't even know where the nearest quarter mile track is, so we'll just be doing eighth mile stuff, I guess, for now. Unless we actually travel someplace that's got a quarter mile track, unless somebody knows that there's a quarter mile track somewhere around <laughs> eastern North Carolina here. Seems they're few and far between. I know Rocky Dam is, but yeah, that's an hour and a half away, which isn't really that far. But we'll see. All right. Thank you, everybody. Have a great weekend.